Then saith he unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. So a lot of times what we do is we pray and pray and pray for God to send the people in. But the scripture says not to pray that the harvest come in, but that laborers go out and get the harvest. Amen, because I don't know, I can't think of a time where corn jumped off the stalk and walked into the house. Amen. I'm pretty sure y'all always took somebody going out there and getting the harvest or getting what was out there and bringing it into the house. Amen. So, excuse me, just like with fish. Amen. Go real quick to Matthew, uh, Matthew 4 and 19. Because... Fish don't jump out of the water and into your bucket. That feels that easy. I'd probably be fishing every day and make a career out of it. Amen. Matthew 4 19. And he saith unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. So Jesus said, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. So there's a, a part of your lifestyle that you have to be following Jesus for the fish to even, for you to even be in a position to get the fish. Amen. And I was praying last night and praying and falling asleep and praying and falling asleep and falling asleep and praying. And I was thinking about how, I mean, because we done got these messages so many different times, but the Lord had placed in my spirit, if I can draw this correctly. I guess if you want to kind of look at this as a bullet, and in the bullet, you have the gospel. So this is what goes in the person. But up here, you have strategy. And here, you have relatability. Because these two impact the person the most. And once you're able to impact the person and get inside that person, I guess then it would kind of I get what I'm saying. This opens up, basically. But then this becomes the bullet head, and then the gospel is then inserted into them. But it takes strategy and relatability to actually get into a person or to get somebody to open up, basically. Amen? So what Jesus did in Matthew 4 and 19 was he used his relatability. He says, okay, here are these men that are fishing. Let me use something that they know that they can relate to. I'm making fish as a man. So now they already understand, well, I know the concept of fishing. So getting men or getting people to follow Jesus has to be that same concept. So there's relatability. So they already know their job description. Now they just have to move from job description of fishing for men. I mean, fishing for actual fish and fishing for men. Amen? Amen. And a lot of times we don't relate with the people that we, we want to get in. And we you gotta understand people out in the world, people that aren't too fond of church, whether it be church or whatever, they already have kind of like a bad connotation of the church. Whether it be oh the church doesn't really help people or the church people think they better than anybody else or I can't relate to the church people so therefore we're two separate groups and I'll cross that path whenever I feel like I can't cross that path. Or whether because I have to get to this certain status in life or I have to live my life a certain type of way before I can be a church person. Amen? Does that make sense? And it's, it's completely opposite, if we're being honest, because a lot of us weren't church people when we came to the church. Amen? It took consistency. It took us changing our lives. But people out there, all they see is how we are, and they don't really know where we came from. Amen? So a lot of times when we will go up to them or we try to talk to them, they don't, they don't know our, our story. They don't know where we came from. They don't know how close we were to them or like them for us to even go back and know where they were, amen, or for us to even relate to them. So all of a sudden, they're closed off because they, 
they have this wall of, uh, you don't know me, you don't know nothing about me. How can you relate to me? How can your God help me when you don't even know what I'm going through or you can't understand what I'm going through? Amen? Amen. So throughout the scriptures, you see Jesus use strategy and relatability. He uses uh, these different words and different speeches to relate to the people but also in a strategic way to pierce to them, their soul, even though their flesh really isn't getting it. Amen? Amen. So we're going to go to uh, John 6 and 1. Amen. And it's not my desire to be before y'all on this morning. I'm just doing what the man of God said. We're going to continue this uh, 90 days of going hard with evangelism and um, focusing on the vision. Amen. Because we know this is part of the vision. Amen. Growing the kingdom is indeed part of the vision. Amen. What I said, John 6 and 1. After these things, Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. And a great multitude followed him, because they saw his miracles, which he did on them that were deceased. And Jesus went up into a mountain, and there he sat with his disciples. And the Passover, a feast of the Jews, was nigh. When Jesus then lifted up his eyes and saw a great company coming to him, he saith unto Philip, When shall we buy bread that these may eat? And this he said to prove him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, Two hundred penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may take a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, saith unto him, there is a lad here which hath five bar barley loaves and two small fishes, but what are they among so many? Okay, stop right there. So, Jesus now sees the opportunity for a strategic move. And winning souls or just being in ministry, period, is kind of like chess. I don't know if any of y'all have played chess, but it's real strategic, and you have to kind of know what that person is going to do or what their, what their move is first, so you can make the move that will beat their move, basically. So if we already know, or we know how we was before we came to church, we knew all our arguments, we knew what, what, why we fought the truth so hard. So one, we already know what the, the people that don't want to come in, we already know what they're going to say. So we, are, we should already have in our mind, all right, they're going to be combative this way. Let me know what I need to say in this area. Amen. Turn me really quick to Colossians 4 and 2. Because you, you have to know where you're going. You have to know what, what you have to say at whatever time and moment it is. And this is why it, it pays to be in prayer and it pays to study. Amen? Because just like going to get people, it, it really is just like going to get fish because there's certain seasons and times of the day and different places and certain bait that don't catch everybody. Amen? And I've been fishing with my dad plenty of times to know that sometimes we would catch fish in the evening, and sometimes we catch fish in the morning, but the bait was always different. Whatever bait worked in the morning did not work in the evening, and vice versa. Or whatever worked in this part of the lake did not work in that part of the lake. And it didn't work with this fish like it didn't work with that fish. So there was always, we always had to switch up our bait, always had to switch up our time. We even had to switch up our reels sometimes. So different ways to draw people, we had to switch it up, amen? Because we always want this generic reel, generic bait, to go out there and catch every fish, and that's not going to happen. Hey Amen. Some fish need a little more pool than others. Some fish need you to sit on them for a little bit. Some fish, some fish need you to just throw out some food and just wait on them. Hey Amen. But some fish need you to actually, like, hook their mouth and reel them in and drag them up on the shore and pin them. Hey Amen. Hey Amen. Continue reading. Oh, I said Colossians. Yeah, read that. Continue in prayer and watching the same with thanksgiving. Continue in prayer and watching the same with thanksgiving, uh huh? With all praying also for us that God would open unto us a door of utterance. Open to, us a door of utterance, uh huh? To speak the mystery of Christ. To speak the mystery of Christ. For which I am also in bond. So, right here, God is saying, well, this was Paul, he was saying that it's important for us to be in prayer so that when it's come time to speak, that we'll be able to speak the right things, showing that we're in the same place that we want you to be in, talking to the sinner. Amen? Can you read it? That I may make it manifest as I ought to speak. Uh -huh. Walk in wisdom towards them that are without. Uh -huh. 
redeeming the time. Let your speech be always with grace. Let your speech be always with grace. Seasoned with salt. Seasoned with salt. That you may know how ye ought to answer every man. So you ought to walk in wisdom towards them that are without, of course, without the truth, redeeming the time. Let your speech be always with grace. With season with salt that you may know how you ought to answer every man. So being a part of the witnessing team and going out and witnessing the people, you shall always know what to say. Amen. And that takes being in prayer. Because there's going to be some times, there's going to be people out here that have word in them and might have more word in them than you. Amen. But if you know what to say at the right time, if you're in prayer, you don't have to worry about that. And man, you don't have to be, and see, a lot of us are, are scared. That's what it is. A lot of people are scared to actually have a conversation with somebody and get a rebuttal. And man, because we're so used to being in here, you don't get a rebuttal in here. You don't have to rebuttal because everything, everybody agrees with. So if you say something, of course, if you ain't all the way off, but if you say something, nine times out of ten people in here are going to be like, oh, yeah, you know, whatever, that's right. But out there, somebody's going to be like, nah, that ain't right. Then what you going to do? A lot of us aren't really strong in the word as we think we are. Amen. Amen. And quick example, go with me to uh, Acts 18. And it, it pays to not be nasty to the people out there just because somebody tell you something that you don't want to hear. Because a lot of people, are, a lot of saints are nasty when it comes to witnessing. Amen. Y'all want to talk to me. I done heard it. I done heard it, you know, you, you catch an attitude because they done caught an attitude, but you're not there to catch an attitude back at them. You're not there. You're supposed, to, you're supposed to talk with them with grace and be seasoned. You're supposed to be seasoned. Your words are supposed to be seasoned. So it doesn't matter what they give you, you're, you're supposed to be in a place to where whatever they say to you doesn't affect you because you're the season. They're not, they're not supposed to season you, you're supposed to season them. When, they, when you leave them, they're supposed to be like, wow, well, I know I gave them all this attitude, and I might have cussed at them, and I told them all this, this, and that, but they didn't change. I had no effect on them. But a lot of times, when they see that they have an effect on you, they're like, oh, they weren't no true man or woman, God, because I got up under their skin too easy. They, they couldn't have been in prayer. They couldn't have been as true as they say they are because now they cussing back at me. And then that's the whole witness. You don't blow on the whole witness. You, please don't say redeem the love because they're not going to come. Amen. Acts 28 and 24. And some believed the things which were spoken, and some believed not. And when they agreed not among themselves, they departed. After that, Paul had spoken one word. Well spake the Holy Ghost. Acts 18 and 24. And a certain Jew named Apollos, born at Alexandria, an eloquent man, and mighty in the scriptures, came to Ephesus. Uh -huh, mighty in the scriptures, uh -huh. This man was instructed in the way of the Lord. This man was instructed in the way of the Lord. And being fervent in the spirit, he spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord, knowing only the baptism of John. And he began to speak boldly in the synagogue, whom when a... a Aquila and Prisquila had heard, they took him unto them and expounded unto him the way of God more perfectly. Now, are you in a position to where somebody with a lot of word in them, and even though they're not correct or all the way correct, can you expound on the scriptures that you know so they can come into the truth? Amen. Because you trying to go back and forth with somebody that already has word in them, you're going to lose if you don't got no word in them. If you can't explain to them what they're preaching is wrong and why and where to guide them, then you're you're no better than just saying you're wrong. Or you're no better than the next church trying to get them to come to their church. Amen. Our, our bread and butter is this word. Like our what we stand by and what separates us from so many other churches and makes us true church is this word. And if you cannot stand on this word, then you cannot support or you cannot represent Church of God the Bible. Amen? You cannot effectively witness, you cannot effectively win souls if you cannot 
understand this and give it back out. If you cannot regurgitate this correctly, then you will lose every time. Amen? And it, it's, it, I can't stress the importance of knowing the steps of salvation. In and out, forward and backwards. Knowing the scripture, not, not having to, oh, let me go look at my notes. Let me keep my, my note journal. No, you need to know these scriptures. In and out. And be it, not just know them and be able to recite them. Because desire can recite them. That's fine. But do you know them enough to explain them? To expound, to take their understanding from level one and take it all the way to level ten to where they're like, oh, I was wrong. Let me hear what you have to say now. Once you get somebody to want to wanna hear you out, then you got it. But until then, you can't, you can't act like you won or you got them because... They're still fighting you. They're still debating you. But once you got to the point where they'll listen to you, now you're done with your post. Now it's time to get them to the church or where they get filled and get baptized. And then they can be expanded to more truth. Amen? But out there, and, and we, this is what we try to do. We try to argue. They argue on salvation. We try to argue doctrine. Amen? Because we think doctrine trumps salvation. And it doesn't. Amen? It, it don't matter how hard or how, how much you know doctrine, and that may be your favorite thing, but if they're arguing salvation, and you trying to tell them, they talking about baptism in Jesus' name, you're like, well, you need to cut your hair anyway. Amen. That, that's not going to help. No, that's no. not going to help. Oh, you got it wrong because you got this, this, and that on, on, on you, and you wearing this, this, and that. That's not, that's not helping them. Because they're going to look at you. Now, they really turn out because... They trying to talk about salvation and baptism in Jesus' name, and you trying to argue doctrine. Amen. Amen. Keep reading. Go back up to uh, twenty-five. This man was instructed in the way of the Lord. And this man was instructed in the way of the Lord. So not only did he have scripture, but he was instructed with this word to do what he was supposed to be doing. Just like um, Acts ten and forty-four, Cornelius. Hey Amen. Let's go there real quick. Start at 10 and Acts 10 and 1. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a, cent a centuron of the band called the Italian band, uh -huh. a devout man, and one that feared God with all his house. Which gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. Pray to God always. So here's another man of God that was about to be joined to the body, but he was already in his word. He was already in prayer. And I and I tell you, uh, it was one time me and Coop went out witnessing on what's that street? Like Johnson Street? I think that's the street. And we was uh, walking around and we was talking to different people. And I could have been no more than six months in the church. And I went out there thinking I knew salvation. And this man. Turned his Bible around on me so quick. I didn't know if I was a Baptist or a Presbyterian or I didn't know what I was at after I got to talking to him because he the way he flipped the word and he knew scripture like, but it, I'm the one with the Bible trying to flip through pages. He spin out scripture, spin out scripture, spin out. What about this? What about that? What about this? And I'm like, cool. I think it's time for us to go. <laughs> oh, and it took me getting to that place. I was like, wow, like these people really out here aren't. People out there really aren't as as slow or what you think they are. People out there really have scripture because a lot of times, especially the older people, they've been in church so long to the point where they know everything. So when they leave, they already think they know everything. So they don't have to go to church. So a lot of times we see people that don't go to church, don't think that they just have no word in them. Please don't believe that. You need to go out there thinking that they are to the T. <laughs> Amen. You need to go out there thinking that they have bulletproof vests and everything. And you need to go out there ready to, to fire back with his word. Amen. Because everybody isn't not packing. Amen. There's some people out there that's packing literally and with his word. Amen. And you better be careful of both. Amen. So, as I was in prayer, and we're going to talk about this more. This is really what I want to get. So, I just want to give y'all some scriptures. But... This is how we're going to be able to, to get to the center man. By strategy and relatability. This is what we need to, to really impact these people. But then the one to come to, want them to come to the church and want them to learn more about God, amen? Amen, real quick, give me Luke 10 and 1. 
And this is this is the strategy that Jesus had to learn. After these things, the Lord appointed other seventy also, and uh -huh. sent them two and two before his face into every city and place. Sent them two by two. So, the strategy for, for Jesus' disciples was, I'm going to send them out two by two. Uh -huh. Whether he himself would come. Therefore said he unto them, The harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he would send forth laborers into his harvest. Go your ways. Behold, I send you forth as lambs among wolves. Carry neither purse, nor scrip, nor shoes, and salute no man by the way. So, don't come out there all flashy, but you need to come out there with humility. That's basically what he was saying. You don't need to come. This is what I'm saying. You don't need to go out there thinking that you know so much scripture and you just big man and woman of God that can't nobody, you know, deal with you or none of that. So you need to go out there with humility, uh huh. And unto whatsoever house ye enter, first say, Peace be to this house. You also need to say, Peace. And if the Son of Peace be there, your peace shall rest upon him. If not, it shall turn to you again. And in the same house remain, eating and drinking such things as they give. For the laborer is worthy of his hire. Go not from house to house. And into whatsoever city ye enter, and they receive you, eat such things as are set before you, and heal the sick that are therein, and say unto them, The kingdom of God is come nigh unto you. But into whatsoever city you enter, and they receive you not, go your ways out into the streets of the same, and say, Even the very dust of your city, which cleaveth on us, we do wipe off against you, notwithstanding, be ye sure of this, that the kingdom of God is come nigh unto you. But I say unto you, that it shall be more tolerable in that day for Sodom than for that city. Woe unto thee, Charazim, woe unto thee, Bethsaida, for if thy mighty works have been done in Tyre and Sidon, which have been done in you, they had a great while ago repented, sitting in sackcloth and ashes. But it shall be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon at, that, at the judgment than for you. And thou, Capernaum, which art exalted to heaven, shall be thrust down to hell. He that heareth you, heareth me. And he that despiseth you, despiseth me. And he that despiseth me, despiseth him that sent me. Okay, so the whole mission is to get them to hear you out. This is your whole task. Get them to hear you. Because we know faith comes by hearing so your whole objective when you get out there is to get them to no, hear you. No. Not to debate them, not to argue with them, but get them to a place where they just need to hear what you have to say. Because, you know, the word is a seed. Amen. And if you can get that seed planted, that you've done your job. Amen. You know what you're supposed to do. But if you go out there with the wrong spirit and you're argumentative and you, you're not going out there with humility, all the different things, that these people aren't going to hear you. They are a lot, they're already uh, really unreluctant to open the door as is. Like, man, a lot of people really aren't, and especially at this time and age, people are really all trying to hear about God because they think they already know everything there is to know about God. Amen. So if somebody is willing to hear you out, please take that time and be, take that time as precious time. Right? Don't, don't think of it as something like, amen. If somebody is willing to hear you out, even if it's just for five minutes, Take that time and be useful with that time, amen? So the strategy is to go two by two. So there was this thing that uh, when I was working at uh, Jose Bank and even at Verizon, there's this thing called Team Set. And it works way better than one person selling alone. So what, what I would do or what we would do at Verizon is, so say I would bring out, the first person would bring out an iPhone. So the person came in and like, oh, my phone messed up. And uh, I need a new phone. So I'm like, all right, well, we have the iPhone 11 and stop. So most times they're five because that's what they want. But what we would do is somebody in the back will already be bringing up another price sheet. 
And they'll be like, oh, well, if you bring out, if you get this tablet along with this iPhone, it'll be the same price, and your bill only go up $10. And a lot of times people be like, oh, my bill's only going up $10? Yeah, I'll get a tablet, and I'm not paying nothing extra. Yeah. So with team selling, it, a lot of times, and it's not to necessarily overwhelm the person, but it's to kind of cut their, their mental thinking. Because the more people get a chance to think, the more that they'll go back and forth with you. So if you're out there, and you and it takes knowing the person that you're going out with. Don't go out there and you don't know the person that you because y'all not going to jail with them. Amen. But if you go out there and you, already know, you and that person already know how each other are, one person goes up and open the door, start the conversation off, and then say that uh, the person that you're talking to gets some batter, or they're not really trying to hear you out. Then the second person comes in and be like, oh, well, you know, you try to add it to the conversation. And you try to get them back in their place. And then before long, now you're talking to, it's three of y'all talking. And little do they know, like, y'all are pressing this, this word into them and they don't even really understand what's going on. But because you're team selling and you got two people dealing with the same issue, even though that they want to leave, the fact that there's two people in front of them and you don't have to be aggressive, but just have conversation with them. You don't have to come in there and slap them with the word, but, you know, hey, how you doing? How's your day? Oh, what's the neighborhood like? Or, you know, do you have kids? Relate with them. You know, if you have kids, talk about kids. If you have, if y'all, if you know them from a the job, talk about the job, do different things like that. You don't have to come in there, you know, as soon as they open the door, you're in the name of Jesus. <laughs> you know, you don't have to come as forcefully as that. Amen. But the fact that you can come in there and have a conversation with them would, would open up a world of difference to them. Amen. 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 It's easier to break down scripture to somebody when somebody is giving a scripture and the other person is kind of breaking it down and putting it in simple terms. And if one person can't relate to them, then the other person will relate to them. And that's how you kind of go off of each other. And you, you like, like Ron said, you bounce off of each other until that person sees it. And like I said, the only objective for y'all is getting them to hear you out. If they completely reject you, then, you know, completely reject you. The words say dust off the dust from the feet and keep going. Amen. But if they let you in and they give you a chance to sit down, sit down and talk to them. Amen. They may be the one song that may bring many more songs. That may be a bigger fit than what you realize. But you have to get them to hear you. Amen. And you have to go in there with humility. Like I said, don't go in there thinking that you know every scripture and that every debate that you go into, you're going you're gonna to completely destroy them. Because I don't went into a lot of debates thinking I was going to win and I got turned around quickly. Amen. So be, be humble and be peaceful when you go into, especially people out there in these, in these rougher neighborhoods. Amen. I, and this is also for safety, going two by two. Amen. I know a lot of times people aren't necessarily available and everybody can't go. But I would highly suggest that if you go into a rougher place or a place that you're unfamiliar with, take somebody else to go with you. Even if the second person isn't as versed in the scripture as you, Take somebody there to just have conversation. If you know somebody or whoever you're going with can talk, amen, or knows how to carry a conversation, that's all you need them for, to carry the conversation. Amen. So while you're arguing scripture with them, maybe they just need a break from the scripture and they just have a conversation. I, just like what uh, Ron said about, uh, or well, y'all call Pastor Griffin and Pastor Tiffin, but what they do, they sat down a lot of times in just random places and people come up and talk to them, and I, I don't talk to them a lot of times, but they'll, they'll literally separate different conversations between the people. So they may be arguing aggressively with one person about the scripture, and the next person they just may be loving on them. And the next person they be, you know, trying to pull them in and draw them in. But you have to know how to deal with different people. I mean, you can't treat everybody the exact same. And I think we, we try to put everybody in this generic, 
let's go get them the same way, the same time, every time. And it doesn't always work like that. Amen? So, we have the strategy. Amen? Once, once we get into that place, once they get comfortable and they've heard the word, once you go to the, the word says all they need is faith the size of a mustard seed. Amen? So now, once you put that word in them, now it's time to pray for them. Now it's time to do some true evangelism and, and pray for them. If they, they need healing, pray for them. Amen. This is why it's, it's a very strategic move to take somebody that, especially if you know somebody has healing hands, them and somebody that's versed in scripture, or them and somebody that knows how to carry a conversation, those two are powerful prayers because now you have somebody that can talk to them, that can open them up, and then you have somebody that come in there with prayer and heal them. Amen. And now they're completely open. Now they're open to whatever happens because not only were you able to carry a conversation and you're good, you show that they we're good people, amen, we're not, you know, these uptight, you know, holier than thou saints, but now you introduce healing into their life. Now they're like, oh, not only these good people, but God has truly used them to, to do these different things in the world. Amen? And now we have, and then we talk about relatability. Now, everybody is not relatable. Everybody doesn't have everything in common with everybody. But if you're able to, there's certain people in the world that, that are really good at, at empathizing. Not sympathizing, not showing pity on people, but empathizing in a way that you can understand what's going on and you can understand what their mental is. Amen? So if you're able to empathize with people, not sympathize, not show pity, not look down on them, but empathize and see where they are, you're in a great place to be relatable. Amen. So when they're talking to you, even though you haven't gone through necessarily everything that they've gone through, but if you kind of know the gist, amen, and you're able to carry a conversation from that point, then you're able to open up that door of relatability. Now they're like, okay, well maybe you haven't done exactly everything, but you see my point. And that's a lot of times all what these people need. Amen. When you come to them with, with Jesus and you come to them and try to give them all this scripture, amen, sometimes all they want to know is can you see where I'm coming from uh, and why I'm uh, objective to follow you. That's all they want to know sometimes is, I understand you want me to come, but understand why I don't want to come. Now, once you understand why I don't want to come, then we can have a different conversation, amen? Now, if you can persuade me to come, now after you see my point, then I'm more reluctant to follow you, amen? But if you can't see where I'm coming from, then of course I won't follow you because they're already thinking that we're just like the holiness church or one of these other churches out here. They just invite people, and then after we invite people, we just send them on their way, man. But it takes somebody that can be relatable and can truly deal with these people on a deeper level, amen. I remember um, Devon was talking about uh, the kids, and the kids aren't reluctant to, to mess with people that haven't been what they've been through, amen. So a lot of times, and Devon, I'm sure you can attest that they fight with the, the counselors are different things because they already feel like you can't relate to me, so why should I listen to you? But when Devon and Tavon go down there, they're like, oh, y'all been through what we've been through. I can hear you out. Even though it may not be necessarily what I want to hear right now, I'll hear you out because at least you understand where I'm coming from. Amen. And we, we shouldn't think people that are going through are any different. A lot of those people out there, they're in a position that they are in, one, because of what they did, but sometimes they're in a position because nobody heard them out when they needed help. Or nobody is hearing them out and they're trying to reach for somebody or reach for something. Amen. And sometimes it takes you being that listening ear and being able to respond and relate to them. That's all they need, amen. And you'll have the best way for life. Sometimes it takes just going that extra step, amen, and, and sitting down and talking to these people and not being so so uptight and so uppity around these people that they feel like, oh, he ain't going to never, you know, whatever, understand me. So we shouldn't be going out there dressed to the T, amen. You don't have to go out there, you know, all, well, I was going to say all Nike down, but, you know, all, you know, logo down, you know, dressed to the head to the T, amen. You don't have to go out there like that, amen. It's a sense of humility that you have to go out there because, and I remember uh, when people used to come to my house, this was way before I came to this. This is probably when I was in middle school, high school. They come to the house, they'd be all dressed up, and I'd be like, I am not opening the door. They are too dressed up on this Saturday morning for me to open the door, and they either gonna sell me something or they're Jehovah's Witness, and I'm not trying to hear that. But if you go to them with some kind of relatability or some kind of comfortability, and they're they're like, all right, well they don't look like they're selling me anything. 
They don't look like they're trying to get anything from me. So let me at least hear them out. Amen? So I'm not saying it's an issue going out with your prayer rolls, but, you know, I wouldn't necessarily go out there with a the prayer roll. Amen? I wouldn't go out there with a suit and tie. Amen? I'll go out there and dress comfortably. I mean, jeans, you know, shoes, T-shirt. It's, it's not that. I'm sure we still got jeans, shoes, and T-shirts somewhere in our closet. Amen? Amen? But it takes us going out there and being comfortable with them and being, being in a place of comfortability with them. Like, don't go out there and be nervous around them. Like, they know when you're nervous. You go up to the table talking to them and you shaking and stuff. Like, they're not going to, they're going to be like, what, what's wrong with this person? Like, I, I don't know if I want to hear them out because they're not, they're not confident in what they're saying and what they're doing. Amen? So then we're going to deal with the gospel. So does everybody know the steps of salvation? I'm going to ask you. So if you raise your hand, I'm, I'm going to ask you. Everybody yeah. knows that's salvation? <laughs> Amen. Yes. You know that's salvation? What's the test of salvation? So, we know the steps of salvation. Do you know the scriptures for the steps of salvation? So, we know, we know the scriptures. Acts 10, 30, what, what does that say? Without reading it, what does that say? Is that, is that, is that hearing? Is that believing? Is that repenting? What's the scripture on repentance? Repent ye therefore and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Okay. What's another repentance scripture? Anybody got any more? Now, when you're telling these people they need to repent, and you can't, why do we repent? You got to turn. You got to turn. Why do you have to turn? Because why? Because if not, then you're like, uh, you're playing with God's grace. Okay. Playing with God's grace. Anybody else got anything else? Why do we, why do we tell people to repent? Alright, so let me 
play double that kick. So if you forget and you watch it, I repent and you're going to keep forgetting. What well, makes me want to turn? Why should I turn? If you're going to forgive me, if God keeps forgiving me, why should I turn? Romans 6 and 1. Why should I be sorry? I'm saying, why should I be God and be sorry? Why should I repent? So why should I tell you? So I don't know. Okay. So I'm I'm the person that we went to see. Alright, so what if I said I already tried God, it didn't work out for me. Then what? <laughs> yeah, Jesus, that's the only God I know. That's the only God I know. <laughs> Don't we believe in the same God? I'm saying. You say Jesus, I believe in Jesus. But what if when I tried, I got hurt? But what if, what if that stopped my season? What if that stopped my season? Ooh. Anybody else, the last 10 people that have came to my house on the last five Sundays, why, why should I come to your church? Because they ain't got the truth. <laughs> we believe in the living God. What Diego said is really good, testimonies. Getting the testimonies in and building, and, and the, the first 10 minutes you have with somebody are some of the most important minutes you could ever have with that person because that's where you establish that first impression. That's where you lay the ground for that relationship. Hey Amen. If you can get them to a point where they trust you, even in the slightest bit, you can build the slightest bit of relationship, that's more ground that you have to draw them. Amen. Hey Amen. There's a draw that they have to have or they have to feel to come to you. You have to have a level of influence. Amen. You can't go out there with this demeanor like you don't care whether they come with you or not. You should come out there with a demeanor like they they should feel like you you need they you need them to go with you. Like you need them to follow you, you need to be their friend, you need to you want to be with them and talk with them and have this relationship. Even outside the church, amen? Because a lot of times these people, 
They, if you only give a church relationship, when they come to church, when they leave, that's all they're going to know you for. But if you can start a relationship that's, that's more than just a church, then they'll be more reluctant. Even if they come and they don't like what they hear, well, I, I'll try it again because I know them. Or I trust that person. So I know they wouldn't do me wrong or they wouldn't lead me in the wrong direction. Amen. So sometimes it takes, you may have to go to that person's house three, four, five times before they actually come to church with you. Amen. Because I'm not just going to follow any stranger that, that knocks on my door. That's just the person. But if I know you or I've seen you around a few times, amen, then it's a little bit different. Like, okay, I done seen this person. Especially if I done seen you do something consistently. So not only have I seen you come to my door consistently, consistently, but I've seen you out. You're still carrying yourself in the same way. Now that speaks a different kind of volume. Because anybody can dress up on any Saturday and go knock on doors. Amen. And there, we have to be different, amen. Just like I know Evangel was talking about um, setting up the, the prayer in the park, amen. And that, that's really good. And uh, what Apostle Devil with the Channel Bibles is, earlier in that day, he may send Ivan out and they'll have a cookout. And they'll invite people out and then they'll be like, okay, well, y'all ate the food. Tonight we're having a service. How, how would you like to come? And I mean, the people know that's exactly what Jesus said. He fed the 5,000. Then he sat down with them and spoke to them. Amen. So those are, these are the same implements that we should, the same things that Jesus did are the same things that we should be doing. I mean, we may have to put a little twist and turns on certain things of this time and nature, but feeding people is always going to be a fool. Feeding people is always going to be a fool. And being good, relatable saints, amen. People are, are scared of good people, if that makes sense. Like people... Good people, there's not enough good people in the world, amen? So when you find good people, hold on to them. And a lot of times people out there, they've been around so many bad people. You being that good, fresher breath there, amen, may be what they cling to, amen? Amen? Amen. 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 I'm, I'm about down to give y'all one more scripture. Amen. Let's go back to uh, uh, let's go back to Matthew nine and thirty seven. And sometimes we need to give people what they need and not what we want them to have. And man, a lot of times we go out there and we want to give them what what yeah what we think they need, and sometimes they may need something completely different. That's like somebody asking to pray for their leg and you pray for their arm. Amen. And they're looking at you like, why are you praying for my arm? I, I said, my leg hurts. Oh, in the name of Jesus, touch their arm. That it may touch their leg. They're like, no, just pray for my leg. <laughs> Amen. That's why it takes a prayer life. It takes a prayer life to know what the people need and to, to restrain yourself. To not say, you don't be so fleshy when you go out there. Because the Bible said, go move to me real quick with me. Back to Luke 10. Luke 10 and starting to. Therefore said he unto them, The harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. So there's a lot of people in the world that are ready to be harvested, but there's not enough laborers, uh huh? Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he would send forth laborers into his harvest. So don't pray that people come to the church, but pray that we have the spirit to go out and get them. Amen. A lot of us are waiting for our family members to somehow just magically come in here. Well, not magically, but yeah, well, a lot of us think magic still exists. So magically just come in here, drive all the way to the bro, and say, I want to join the church. Amen. But the Bible said we need to pray that we go out and get them. Amen. We have to be strategic in how we get our family members. Amen. You read it. Go your ways. Behold, I send you forth as lambs among wolves. Go your ways. Behold, I send you forth as lambs among wolves. So, in essence, the people out there are already, already ready to combat us and eat us up and fight us on this word and what we believe because, what they, one, they just either don't want to believe they have church hurt, or, you know, there's a myriad of different reasons why they don't want to come to church. Some may just be full of the devil. 
But that's not for us to, to go back and forth with them or to decide or to, to argue with them, amen. We're supposed to come as lambs, so that means gentle. We're supposed to come to them as, I don't want to say the weaker vessel, but come to them with, with our hands out and not with our fists up, amen, ready to fight them on everything that they say. Amen, we need to come with them. Uh, Pastor, I'll give an example of you can, the, you can give a cat food in two different ways. You can either hand it to them or you can throw it at them. It's still food, amen, but it depends on how you give it to them. Amen. So we didn't go out there with our hands open, amen, and not with our fists up, ready to fight them on every word just because you're nervous about if somebody's going to be combative. Now, you need to have word in you if somebody's compassionate with this word. Because the Bible said earnestly contending for this faith. Mm-hmm. Amen. So you need to be able to contend for it, but don't go out there thinking you're going to go out there and slap everybody upside the head. Amen. Amen. Does anybody have any questions about the strategy or how we're going to go about uh, witnessing effectively? Amen. So let, let's make sure when we do go out with this, like this is really, really uh, going to be effective. If we, if we go out there with strategy, and we get these people to open up by being relatable and not being Oh, I'm, I've been in church all these years. I don't know what that what that's like anymore. No I, I can't I can't believe you would even drink that anymore. <laughs> you weren't drinking. You weren't drinking not that long ago. Now, hey amen. It wasn't. It wasn't that long ago. You still know what being drunk feel like. Hey amen. Hey amen. So go out there with a little bit. Now I'm not saying go out there and condone what they're doing. And yeah, let me get a cup too. Now that's not what I'm saying. <laughs> but go out there and be that way. But go out there and, yeah, man, I used to do this all the time. And, you know, why, why did, I was drinking because I had a lot of home issues. Do you, do you have anything going on like that? And that's how that door gets open. That's how you open like, yeah, I mean, I do drink because I have some issues going on. Yeah, like, I can understand. I, I had the same thing going on. Now you open that door up. Now they're more likely to talk to you. Well, I've been drinking this long, and I, I just couldn't. It wasn't doing me no good, so that's why I went to church. And now I don't have to drink. Now I got to do drink. Amen? And now, now you're going from reliability to strategy. And now once that door is open, now you give them the gospel. Now you give them the gospel. Now you give them Jesus. Because now that they're open from being relatable and you've been strategic on how you do it, the gospel is what they need to drive it home. Amen? That's that final kill shot. Amen? Amen. Uh, you can stand to your feet and give God a hand of praise.